Welcome as we come to day four of our reflections on Easter. The questions about Easter asked at the time and still with relevance today and really get to our soul and where we are. Monday we saw, can you even focus for one hour as the disciples struggled in Gethsemane? On Tuesday we thought about what is truth? Question still so relevant today. And then yesterday, Wednesday, we were thinking, of course, about the need uh, to work out who Jesus is. Are you God's king or someone standing on your own? Today, we're going to look at whether we want Jesus. Then moving ahead on Good Friday, it'll be different than Good Friday. At eight o'clock, we'll be live streaming from the church. You'll still receive it through the internet. We'll be looking at the question on Jesus' lips as he died. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And then on Sunday, everything changes. It changes because it's Resurrection Day. It also changes in a practical way because the church will be open, 11.30. And you're welcome to come and join us in the church. There will be an overflow in the Tory room and the car park will be open as well. Of course, if you're not well, uh, do please stay at home and watch, uh, watch over the internet. And we will have proper social distancing precautions still in place. So tonight... Do you want Jesus? We face choices all the time. What we're going to eat, what we're going to wear, where we're going to go, who we're going to visit, family choices every day, work choices, church choices, every day, money choices. And what we choose shows what's important to us. There are a number of choices that we'll make quickly, but there are other choices that we will delay and we'll push them down the road for as long as we have to. Quite often that can be due with our health. There's something not right, but we're not going to go to the doctor until we have no other option. COVID has made some of the choices we want to make more complicated and have delayed them, even the conversation about whether to go on holiday. But there comes a point when we have to make a decision. When the decision comes to a head and you've got to decide now what you're going to do. I'm not sure why it was this year of Jesus' ministry, of his three-year public ministry, that all this happened. I don't know why it didn't happen in the second year. I don't know why the Pharisees didn't delay. I do get the feeling from Scripture that Jesus was pushing the agenda. And Palm Sunday on this particular year, he came in to pass over time, riding on a donkey, making a statement of a king of peace. It is Passover, a very strong nationalist and religious festival. And Jesus goes into the temple and he overturns the tables of the money changers at the start of that week. He engages in dialogue and conversation and disagreement with the religious leaders. And if you read the scriptures for yourself, you will see that through it all, Jesus stands with a voice of authority. It's a question of kingship. question of who's in charge. And the religious leaders decided that Jesus had to go. Judas was willing to betray him. There were were tensions under Rome as to who could do what. And so they go to Pilate, the representative of Rome, the, the head of the government in the place, because he's the one who can get Jesus executed. And Pilate does then what people still do, and it's still dangerous, as we know, when the government hand over the decision to the popular vote of the people. The loudest voice in those situations seems to speak louder than justice. And here we have a crowd of people. And as with any crowd now and then, there are agitators and manipulators in the crowd who want their pressure group to be dominant, who threaten. And we're told in scripture, as we'll hear in a moment, that there was almost a riot taking place. And so the head of government caves in. Pilate really didn't want to get involved in this, what he saw as a local dispute. He wasn't that bothered about Jesus, but he knew something had to be sorted. And he thought he'd find a clever way, as politicians do, in an old tradition. And he says, I'll let the people choose. There's Barabbas, freedom fighter, really a terrorist. And there's Jesus, who claimed to be a healer and the son of God. Remember, this is the same crowd as Palm Sunday. 
the crowd who cheered Jesus in. And listen to what happened. So when they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you? Barabbas or Jesus, who is called Christ? For he knew that it was out of envy that they had delivered him up. Besides, while he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that righteous man, for I have suffered much because of him today in a dream. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The governor again said to them, Which of you, the two do you want me to release to you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with Jesus, who is called Christ? They all said, Let him be crucified. And he said, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he was gaining nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. And all the people answered, His blood will be on us and on our children. Then he released for them Barabbas, and having scourged Jesus, delivered him to be crucified. Do you want Jesus? And this clamour of the crowd, these voices of religious and political persuasion, of, of a power struggle and of prejudice, they shout and they shout and they agitate. And the crowd are willing to put their whole reputation on the line and say, may, their blood, may his blood be on our hands. And when we're in a crowd, we can and we do get sucked in. Jesus was taken to be crucified. The disciples, his own closest followers, had fled all bar one of them. What would you do in that situation? We like to think we're the Palm Sunday crowd, but what about the Good Friday crowd? You've seen it in football hooliganism, where people who are seen to be decent members of society away with a crowd, and especially if there's alcohol, get themselves into trouble. Some of us are old enough to remember that horrendous genocide in Rwanda, the Hutus and the Tutsis. And the basic rule in genocide, the basic rule in this sort of situation is if you don't join with us, we will treat you as the enemy. It was the same in Nazi Germany. It's been the same in Northern Ireland. And some of us old enough will probably never forget the police footage of two soldiers who took a wrong turning and drove into a funeral cortege and were brutally murdered by the crowd. And still it goes on in social media and in public conversation. And one of the big issues that we deal with today is the questions of sanctity of life as the Bible defines it, or of the sanctity of marriage as the Bible defines it, or of the salvation of souls as the Bible defines it, over and against the right to choose. The Bible is very much under attack in the West. God's standards, God's word. And more than that, but if you believe the Bible today, and young people, you will know this if you're watching. A lot of people who say we as Christians, we're just fools. We're, we're not, we've not got any sense. And so we, we turn to the Bible and we see, well, the Bible says that God chooses the foolish things of the world. And we're a bit caught because we're looking a bit silly here, folks best to go with the crowd it's the easy way out point of least resistance at school and at work and at family when people are mocking Jesus when when the bible is being attacked when the basic question is God's way or your way do you choose the world and the temptations that are there or do you take your stand and choose Jesus and if that's the case Remember Jim Elliot, a missionary who gave up his life for Jesus. He said he is no fool who gives what he can't keep to gain what he can't lose. And as we come to a close tonight, today, just to remember that in Acts chapter 2, G Peter is speaking at Pentecost. Fifty days after this, a lot of the crowd would be the same. Peter doesn't hold back. He says, 
Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. So what do you do about that? And it says, Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. Even if we have taken the wrong choice, sided with the popular crowd against Jesus, there is still hope because Jesus rose from the dead. He lives. And the question is still there for us day by day by day. Do you want Jesus? And when the people had sobered up a bit and the crowd dynamic had gone and Peter speaks of a risen Lord and he kneels him for being responsible for his death as we are because of our sin. They say, what can we do? And he said, they said, believe in the risen Lord. Jesus said, Whoever is ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him will the Son of Man also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. And in closing, remember at the end of time, there are still two choices. The road still offers two destinations, but it's mm -hmm. set then. And this time, it's Jesus who makes the choice. And we will hear either, well done, or depart from me. Matthew 25, it says, When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. Before him will be gathered all the nations and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will place the sheep on his right but the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you cursed into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Do you want Jesus? There is a cost, but there's a greater cost to reject him because at the end of the day, the question is, does Jesus want you? Does Jesus want me? Well done, good and faithful servant. Or depart from me. May you know his presence. Thank you.